Χαίρετε. Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Καλώς ήρθατε στο πρώτο Welcome, Welcome Greece uh, online. Ελπίζουμε να είναι και το τελευταίο που θα χρειαστεί να γίνει online και τα υπόλοιπα uh, να γίνουν uh, όπως γινόντουσαν παλιά και παραδοσιακά από κοντά. Uh, ας το ευχηθούμε όλοι σε αυτό. Uh, θα ξεκινήσουμε με την πρώτη μας ομιλία, η οποία θα είναι στα αγγλικά. Οπότε θα, α, α, θα, αρχίσουμε, θα, θα παρουσιάσουμε και τον ομιλητή μας στα αγγλικά. Το θέμα της ομιλίας του είναι πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρον και πάρα πολύ σύγχρονο. So, uh, hello, Vinit. Uh, I, was just, hello. I was just wishing to everyone that the next WordCamp that we are going to find ourselves in will be a physical, uh, will be an actual uh, WordCamp where we all beat... Uh, Uh, be together and, uh, and discuss everything uh, from uh, from close distance. Let's hope this will be uh, we will be able to achieve that next of year. Uh, so your talk is about a really hot topic uh, these days. Uh, SEO is always hot, but uh, with the core web vitals this this year, it's becoming even hotter. And uh, so I'm going to. I give the stage to you and uh, enjoy your pr your presentation. Uh, so uh, you have uh, around 30 minutes for your talk, and then we will have some Q and A for another 10 minutes uh, by the attendees. The stage is yours. All right, guys. So first of all, my name is Vilvar. I currently work with Search Metrics as a web developer for the marketing. For some reason, this interface is taking my old information. So I couldn't figure out this platform and how to fix that. So, all right. So I will start with my presentation right now. Uh, screen share. All right. So you should see my screen now. Uh, let me check. I hope the slide sharing is working. Can you please confirm if the slide sharing is working? Okay, looks working. So guys, so I'll be talking about this most hot topic right now. It's called Google Core Web Vital and how you can improve the performance and SEO of your WordPress website for a better user experience. So what, uh, okay, this is a very hot topic right now, as you guys know. So let's get into it. First of all, I would like to say shout out for the WordCamp Greece team uh, for organizing this amazing event. Of course, we are missing the physical events, but these guys are making it happen. So I would say if you are there, you're using Twitter, give them a shout out, write them a tweet and say, say give them a thumbs up. So kudos to the organizers, first of all. All right, let's begin. Let's talk about buttons. Buttons are amazing creatures. Some press it like one time, some, doesn't press it at all or some press it like 100 times as if it will be making the roads uh, go faster and the traffic goes faster. People don't have patience at all. So, and they keep on pressing like this and increasing the frequency of pushing these buttons is directly proportioned to users level of prestation in case of our websites. And guess what? <laughs> you should definitely be doing that like Will Ferrell from the movie Elf is doing here. Because guess what? You're making a lot of people angry in real life, of course. So, all right, let's begin with some terminology. So there are uh, important things before you, sh you should know before we begin. Uh, like what is a DNS? Like, uh, as you guys know that you, you can able, you are able to map your website to different records and see, uh, like pointing to a server. So, and that's called domain name system. Latency, how fast or how slow your website is responding. That's the latency. The first, uh, time to interactive. It is a metric which uh, says that how long it takes a page to become interactive. Interactive is defined as the point where the page has displayed the useful content, right? Uh, and the second thing is uh, FCP, the first contentful paint. It measures the time from navigation to the time when the browser renders the first bit of content from the DOM. This is an important milestone for users because it provides feedback that page is actually loading. And yeah, so we are talking about terminology. Guess what? Google loves your experience. SEO is not a black magic. Uh, there are some aspects of SEO which, uh, which are basically relevant uh, and high quality content, 
content is accessible for search engines there are some good seo signals and guess what google or web vitals lies under this last category and and this is what in these tweets they're being talked about like okay what is an example of bad user experience and ad overlay event promo overlay and so on or not a lazy loaded website it's just simple adding loading equal to lazy i'll be talking about it in the coming slides guess what google wants you to speed up core web vitals focus on three aspects loading interactivity and stability loading means how quickly the page loads and interactivity means how soon you interact with the page and stability it means how stable the page is as it is loading and as the user is interacting so these are the three measures uh, which are mostly lcp fid and cls i'll bring you in the next slide how they look like and core web vital metrics are basically combined with other signals for search which are also called as page experience ranking factors which are https safe browsing mobile first and no other intrusive interstitials core web vitals so these are the three major factors you can find more about it on the link also you can test these three aspects also so as as i said lcp is about measuring loading performance and if these measures uh, interactivity and the cls measures layout stability to ensure user experience where whether it's a smooth and natural interactions and they are the what causes the bad cls which is images with dimension or ads or iframes or multiple web fonts i'll be showing about this in the further slides all right you can test about it uh, about the google core web vitals from various tools we will be also talking about it later and you can see your core web vitals report in your google search console account so a bad website performance has a measurable business impact uh, every second the website is loading late your customers are running away and guess what it's a reality so uh, every if the website's bounce rate uh, is load time sorry is 1 to 3 second the probability of bounce increases 32% and so on and so forth it keeps on increasing so this is a excel i'm quoting it from google's page so <laughs> uh okay uh let's say if a uh, uh, telemarketing guy calls you right and say that sir i want to talk about uh, your credit cards you know like uh you know what it is interesting uh and and you keep on you know uh, blocking them like he is trying to ask sell his services and you are blocking them so basically at the end he will be uh, he will be uh, irritated he wants to finish his work right so basically that's the same thing i want to talk about a bad speed will have less downloads less conversion or less revenue and less sales and speed is a ranking factors on searches from now on as the google core web vitals is coming so so this is the meme i am quoting here but how you can do that what do you need so there are certain things which you should know first thing is of course switch to php 7 there is no doubt about that wordpress only executes 25 mb of cpu instructions on a php 7 runtime compared to 100 mb to do the same on older php versions sure php 7 is no brainer now php 8 also there but again you have to check whether your website is compatible with that or not next thing maria db as the uh, statistics says that maria db is performing better uh, than mysql it's a fork of mysql of but it's faster I would definitely recommend going for MariaDB uh, to host your WordPress website. You can uh, in WordPress VVV, which is a, a WordPress varying vagrant vagrants. It's a virtual uh, box. You can say based on vagrant uh, by used by WordPress core community. They have replaced MySQL with MariaDB way back, so they are also supporting it. Other than that, what you should take care of website hosting, and guess what? No free hosting at all. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're a pro blogger that means you uh, think on a free host definitely never 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 no free hosting there are multiple type of hostings shared dedicated or cloud and i would definitely recommend you go cloud host on cloud and use the power of cloud and scale when you want guess what this is definitely not cloud computing okay what else 
So DNS, uh, you should uh, have a better DNS provider. So switch to a better DNS, every query counts. And maybe you could switch to Route 53 by Amazon. That's faster. Uh, that's my recommendation, of course. I could tell you a DNS joke, but it might take you 24 hours to get it. So yeah, so how you can test uh, uh, how good your or bad your website is doing. So there are certain tools like uh, tools.pingdom or Lighthouse Test or GT Metrics or Chrome Developer Tools, right? So you can check uh, all the scores in uh, these tests and figure out how's the situation. Of course, these tests are simulation, not a real number scenario, but it will give you an idea where you can improve it. Right? Okay, so let's proceed to the next slide. A website is done. No, a website is never done. You have to always keep on improving it in all the different aspects. Okay, so next aspect is image images. You feel this? Yeah, that is the disappointment your sh user should never feel, right? This loading icon, it keeps the user frustrated. Okay, what about images? What do you have to do? So there are certain things where you can improve it. Uh, responsive images here are basically part of WordPress core, but you should serve the images that you actually need it, right? You can uh, width, set the width based on pixel, or you can align it, or you know, just look what is the user actually needs. You can lazy load the images. You can do responsive images loading. You can use lighter formats like SVG or WebP, right? You can based on, uh, uh, right, uh, okay. You can adapt based on user's effective uh, network type. For instance, if you're serving a video slider or GIF based, Background for faster internet, internet, serve a big image for smaller connections. So serve a background image, sorry, for a smaller internet connections. Uh, you can do optimization of images. You can compress the images. You can use images CDN. Lazy loading is definitely recommended. You can lazy load the off-screen images with JavaScript. You can use one of these libraries or as simple as that, loading equal to lazy. And most of the browsers are now supporting it. Or you could have a, any library also as a feedback. But for now, nowadays, uh, adding loading equal to lazy should be fine, in my opinion. All right, next slide is, <laughs> I tell you a load performance joke, but the image didn't finish loading. Your images will fail you if you do not optimize them. If you add a one megabyte image, and if the user is on a slow internet connection, they are going to go crazy. So what you could do, you could optimize images. You can do a script-based optimization or use some tools like TinyPNG, Smush, Optimizilla, or you could take a look at this guideline, images.guide. You should compress all the thing. And guess what? WebP is the new black. As I said, serve images in the next generation formats. OK, what else? Images CDN. You could uh, make use of images CDN like S3 Front or DigitalOcean Spaces, Jetpack Photon, Ekamai CDN, Fastly. And you could do an integration with these plugins, W3 Total Cache or Offload S3. I'm not sure if you're aware about how the CDN works, but the concept is pretty simple. Uh, there are concepts like edge locations, like across the world. When you request an image, at first, it goes to the server and goes to a nearby location near you, right? Let's say you're based somewhere in uh, East Europe, right? Whatever is the nearest edge location, uh, it, it would cache there. And next time you or your user makes a request, they will get it from the nearest location. So it's a bigger concept. I would recommend to take a look at some tutorials, but yeah, it's a pretty easy stuff that, that you could do. Integrate SCN. Fonts, are you loading multiple fonts? Uh, of course. No, that's not a good idea. But even if you have to use multiple fonts, you should use font swapping. Font swapping is a good practice, basically. By default, if a font is not loaded, browser will hide text for up to three seconds. And Edge, Chrome, and Firefox, and infinity time for Safari. And that's basically not ideal. The declaration of basically the easy fix is simple. You could do font display equal to swap on display equal to swap. And you should avoid multiple or costly round trips to any origin. 
Okay, caching. You don't use caching at all. Tell me about how fast your website is. Yeah, I'm not making the guy, but you got it. What type of caching you could use for your website? There are multiple type of caching like page cache, browser cache, object database, or transient cache you could use. You could use some server side caching also, uh, which are which would help you improve your site. Okay, the, uh, then you could use plugins like W3 Total Cache or WP Super Cache. Now let's talk about uh, the next topic, which is transient caching. Now, what is a transient caching? I'm not saying gonna say that, oh boy, you're showing me code, what I have to do. No, transient caching is pretty simple. Let's say you have to make a query, like WP query, right? So in uh, every time a page loads, it's gonna make a query and make a query to database and it may take time. The idea is pretty simple, like database can make a query. If the page is not changing much, database can make a query and then you're storing it as a transient. The example is simple. Uh, I, I, you don't have to go in the deep in the, uh, this code, but this is just to give you an idea how this would look like. So instead of writing simple new WP query and making a query and showing the results here. So this is an example. What you see here is uh, to retrieve the featured post. So here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm uh, setting up a get transient call here and checking if the transient already exists. If it isn't, it will create one. And then uh, the set transient will set the transient if the transient is created and store it for 12 hours. So after every 12 hours, it will check if the new feature post is available. I would definitely recommend to take a look at that. I was able to make a website 300 times percent faster by just using transient caching because it was making a lot of queries. All right, next topic. So before Corona times, remember we used to go to office a lot, right? After lunch, one day I found myself needing to go to toilet following by lunch. And out of five cubicles, first four were occupied. So uh, I thought, okay, one empty cubicle could be enough. But guess what? Uh, <laughs> guess what? Uh, from my previous experience, I knew mobile connectivity and office will uh, Wi-Fi only extends for the first four cubicles. And I thought for a moment and decided, no, this is not acceptable. And I returned to my desk, waited until later, despite being in discomfort. That day I realized that as a human being, I require an internet connection to take a dump. This is a problem worth solving. I was very disappointed that day. And guess what? I had only one option left to play with Dimor. You must have seen this GIF. This is a very famous offline GIF. I mean, when the internet connection isn't there, Chrome will show you this and you can pass on your time by playing this. So we, we all have played a lot of these. And guess what? A reliability never means showing this dinosaur. Your website should be reliable for your user. Next concept here is Wi-Fi, right? Offline is okay, but at least it's honest. Can I fetch this? No. I, can I go there? No. Can I do this? No. You must have seen all these images, right? This icon, little icon. You are very frustrated. I like you're trying to load the page. The page isn't loaded. It is the really bad scenario. This is worse than a slow connection, and worse, you will see a light screen, white screen. Let's enjoy the fruits of Li-Fi for a second. This is it. Just this. Forever and ever. You could just put your phone, get on something else, but you kept waiting because you, it might suddenly load. Maybe in the next five seconds. No, you shouldn't give up now. But in your heart, you know that once after you give up, it will work. Only if you have waited, so you wait and wait. <laughs> and guess what? This is what life high is in a nutshell. What is the solution for it? Guess what? Go offline. Yes, that's right. First I was saying go cloud, now I'm saying go offline. Yes, this is this can this is possible. But how? What is the magic? behind it. So you could go for progressive web apps. PWAs are basically uh, a small version of your website or stored as an app. What is the thing that require for an app? It should be available offline. It should be faster. 
and you could have push notification. These are all features available with, with PWAs. This is a topic for maybe a, another talk, but for now, I would like you to uh, take a look at PWAs, give it a try. There is a plugin available in WordPress repository uh, where, which tries to implement that, and maybe one day WordPress will merge that plugin into the core. I would de definitely recommend to take a look. Microsoft is indexing PWAs to the App Store, and this is and PWAs are the website basically who took the right vitamins and became the app. Okay, but how does it do that? It uses the concept of service worker. I may not go dive into the detail, but I would definitely recommend you to take a look at that. Service worker are basically the middleman which is caching the internet response and giving your page easily faster for your user. I would recommend you take a look at that. Due to time constraint, we have to focus on another topic. Let's move to another topic, which is JavaScript and CSS. So what you should do, you should mark that JavaScript as async. Now it won't block rendering and it will exit whenever it finishes loading, right? We can't render until all our CSS is downloaded. Therefore, we need to prioritize our CSS. We have to inline the bits of CSS, first render, and load the rest async using JavaScript. In case of reading data from APIs, use chunked encoding or multiple data frames if you're using HTTP2. Next thing, critical CSS. You could use tools like this to load your uh, load the critical CSS first. And you shouldn't be doing like this, like making a small changes and, and your website is happening like this, right? So inline critical CSS is the initial important part which loads first. And I would recommend to do that in order for Im to improve your first loading time. What else? JavaScript. All right. So not all the programmers like JavaScript a lot. And their uh, third-party code is responsible for 57% execution time on the web. And that's a huge number based on top 4 billion web. And a lot of CPU-intensive scripts can delay your user interaction so you should avoid the high boot up type and and obese extensive libraries and try to split up the code and use pre preload preconnect prefetch and like dns prefetch to to improve the loading time all right so next thing is minify you should minify all the time you should minify your css chakrib you could use one of these libraries or one of these plugins when you minify JavaScript, nobody knows how bad your naming scheme is. So yeah, uh, but I would recommend to minify. I like this meme here. What else? Compression. So, OK, Twitter uses broadly to reduce API responses. GZIP is powering almost all the websites nowadays. So I would definitely recommend to check, or check out these two compressions for your web servers. And this would improve the loading time. Next thing, I'm not sure how much time is left. Uh, is there a way to find out? Okay. So, okay, resource hints. Uh, okay, there is a thing called as PRPL pattern. So you should follow that. Now, what is that? Purple pattern. Push, render, pre-cache, lazy load. You should push the critical resources using preload and server push. Pre-caching top stories using service workers and skeleton screen to improve performance of your pages. So basically, the first point is pre-connect critical origin. You should use things like link rel equal to pre-connect. This will decrease in latency. Then you should use preloading the critical scripts. The faster time to load, uh, you, if you have to improve, you have to maybe preload it. So you could say link rel equal to preload. And let's say if you have to load font, you can say as font, right? So this example shows you about prioritization. So this is the third topic. So it says ULID critical. So you're saying that, OK, this image is important for me. Then you're saying importance high. Or if it's not important, you're saying low. So that is what I would recommend to take a look at these concepts, as this would help you improve the performance of your website. Next topic is adaptive serving. Uh, OK, Twitter did something here, right? Twitter did some client-side compression. They added this data saver mode and uh, some light applications. Facebook also had before, but I'm not sure about now, like mbasic.facebook.com basically for slower market. And nowadays, uh, the, they all are following the offline first strategies. You can take a look at the YouTube's 
the mobile version um yeah they also had this and twitter they also have this all right scale okay you started using websites on uh, uh cloud but what now you have to scale when the requirements come so there are two concepts here called scaling uh for scaling it's called scale up and scale forward let's say if you have a server on amazon web services uh for 8 gb ram and certain number of hard drive right uh if you go for, for your ram from 8 gb to 16 gb that would be called scaling up but what is scaling forward you keep the ec2 server for at 8 gb maybe take out the database server from that and also take out uh the elastic cache elastic search as a as a separate services so basically you're not scaling up as a web server but you're scaling forward and choose to use different services right uh you could also use the load balance architecture or serverless if and when possible i would also recommend to use elastic search take out that i have also talked about it in uh, in my pitch talks in wordcamp um so yeah these are the things i would definitely recommend you what else what else so you should uh, avoid the bloats right Uh, the core is also adding some bloats plugins are adding some bloats. i would say take a look at that get rid of that or at least uh, take out what's what's loading slow there are certain plugins which allows you to see uh, what is the bloat in your website and you want to clean up you might want to clean up the unwanted plugins and you should optimize your database check the expiry headers headers also right next topic possible issues of course you will be getting a lot of issues even after you uh, you have managed and you do that uh, you yeah, guess what if there is a problem there is definitely a solution for any problem i believe right so next thing is your website speed is more important than ever this is the main take here so yeah google started ranking your websites now based on your speed so guess what you uh, now core web vitals have to be part of every seo audit and if you take the core web vitals concept seriously and start working on improving the website speed google will also reward you thank you for your attention i am open for any questions and thank you these are my details uh, you can mail me if you have any questions or you can write me uh uh on twitter if you have also any questions slides will be available for download after the talk here also i will be sending uh, i'll be putting a tweet also on my twitter account thank you so much time uh over to organizers now thank you thank you very much vinit it was a it was a really great presentation it was actually a, a cross course on performance i think right yes uh, definitely you, you covered almost uh, a little bit of of all topics that that was the actual that. idea basically <laughs> great great so let's see uh if we have any questions from our attendees uh you can raise your hands people and uh, uh i will give you the stage to to express your question to our uh, speaker or you can use the q and a uh to ask a question there I know this is our first uh, our first talk and uh, the very first talk that we have ever used uh, Airmeet uh, in the past so everybody is trying to get acquainted to the platform and the uh, in the idea of doing things online um so uh, I, I I I see that there is a question in our Q&A to to begin with uh uh a friend uh, Harisis is asking is webp or jpeg better can you answer that in a general way uh, uh i would say you should go for webp right now because uh google is rewarding you if you're using better images of course and it's one of the recommendation if you take a look at the lighthouse test in the lighthouse test google is also saying use webp if possible and in jpg they are also recommending jpg 3000 if i'm not wrong you should take a look at the lighthouse result you could use one of these I would say if lighthouse is not showing a problem with your image that means your image is good to go nothing to change no change required. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Do you find that lighthouse is sometimes 
very much into into small details. I mean, it's saying you can improve your image two percent and by three percent. And I mean, how, how crazy can we get? <laughs> This is actually crazy. You know, the, uh, my personal experience says that all the compression algorithms are like uh, full of lot of uh, craziness in my opinion. So, for example, it, it says two percent, three percent. In my experience, what I have seen, uh, it points out PNG a lot. Like if it's a PNG image, they're like, nah, you can do something better. But uh, I tried uh, things like a tiny PNG and all PNG gave me good results, but of course it's not perfect. So that's the thing. It cannot, Google will never be satisfied with whatever you do and no website is perfect. But yeah, you shouldn't definitely be using a one MB image. That is my, you should set a rule. I mean, in our company, I've set up a rule. Okay, nobody should upload Uh, more image size, let's say more than 100 KB or 150 KB. I if it's really, really not possible, then think about it. Maybe mm -hmm. you could scale down your website. You don't have to load a 4,000 by 4,000 image. If the container or div container is 200 by 200, maybe you upload a double the size for Retina, like 400, 400. That should be enough. If you scale down, cut, crop the image, compress it, should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. That would be my advice. Uh, a couple more questions. The next one is about uh, CDNs. Uh, Vangelis is asking uh, if website visitors and web server are in the same location, the same geographical location, do we need a CDN? Uh, it's a tricky one, but the uh, answer is yes. Why, I would say. Because uh, think about, uh, okay, maybe I will try to do it with my hands or I can show my image if it's possible. But Imagine, let's say, uh, if your users are in Greece and your website also hosted in Greece, at maybe there is not much needed, but at least if you have a gr uh, chances of improving by 1%, I would say you should go for it. Why? Because uh, if you improve, if, if even if this give you 1% of boost, you decrease your bounce rate. That means more user, more conversion as always. But and also this will decrease load on your server because the request will not go to your server but to a third party CDN. That means less loaded server can handle more traffic. I hope I was able to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question by Marius is how do you deal with full width image with 4K desktop monitors? Uh, we, we don't only have mobile small screens, we have uh, huge large 4K monitors now, right? <laughs> mm. Okay, so I think I, I talked about it in one of my slides here before. Uh, you can uh, define, uh, you can also do things like load these images only on the, the mobile and rest keep the desktop different. There is a, also a possibility, I don't remember now, but I did it Uh, one time before that uh, this div container is loading different image for mobile or and different image for desktop. Maybe this could be a workaround, but ideally I don't have a perfect solution for that at this moment. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can't have it all at the same time, uh, but thank you. Uh, another question by Costas. Uh, okay, third party scripts, I mean Google AdSense scripts, they show up as blocking. Uh, what can we do to avoid that? Okay, Or so I right now I found a nice solution for that. Uh, as you guys know, the GDPR is more important in Europe now. And, uh, and in order to follow the GDPR, you have to take the consent of the users. There are certain plugins coming up right now, which allows you to block those script until the user consent. I know it's a separate topic, GDPR. Uh, so if you have those plugins, for example, I have personally used OneTrust. What OneTrust uh, does is it allows you uh, to set up script blocking within your GTM. You can block the scripts, won't load, and when this website is loading, and until the user consented. That means Google thinks that, okay, there is no script at all on your website. I know it's not an ideal solution, but in case of we living in Europe, this will work, and it solves two purposes. One, perform second GDPR. Okay, thank you very, very much, uh, Vinit. It was a great presentation and a great Q&A. Uh, I would like to ask you to be available at one of our speakers' booths in Mounds, so uh, for uh, a little more after your presentation. Oh. Everybody uh, could uh, meet you there and ask uh, for any more questions that they might have.
Normally, I would ask for a big round of applause in a physical event, but let's go with a big round of reactions with uh, hearts and smileys for uh, <laughs> Vinny. <laughs> This made my day. <laughs> yeah, and let's let's I- imagine how it would be it would be in real life. So uh, the next uh, the next the next talk the next talk will start in five minutes. So we we'll have to end the session right now, and uh, we will talk uh, with everybody in a little while. While bye bye everyone. Bye bye. Thank you everyone for the amazing reaction.